Goldman Sachs. The best and brightest don't go into politics. The best and brightest are at Goldman Sachs. The proof of this quote lies in the fact that many of today's top government officials are former employees of Goldman Sachs. Rishi Sunak, Chancellor of the Exchequer in Britain. Malcolm Turnbull, former Prime Minister of Australia. Mario Monti, former Prime Minister of Italy. John C. Whitehead, former Under Secretary of State and Steve Nuchin, the Secretary of the Treasury in the United States are just some of them. Goldman Sachs has a vibrant history of 150 years. It all starts with the determination of Marcus Goldman who, with the insight of Samuel Sachs, his son-in-law, undertook a journey which led to the establishment of one of Wall Street's most influential banks. Marcus Goldman was born as Mark Goldman in December 1821 to cattle farmers. His grandfather was called Jonathan Marks, but had changed his name to Goldman when Jews were finally permitted to have surnames. Marks' family was Jewish, so he regularly attended classes at the synagogue in Würzburg, where, on a day like any other day, he met Joseph Sachs. Marcus and Joseph's became fast friends, developing bonds that ran so deep that it would last for generations to come. The next few decades saw Marx's family witnessing the rising persecution and anti-Semitism in Germany. They made a decision to migrate to America, a land of social and economic opportunity, something that their own country had denied them. So, during the first wave of Jewish immigration to America, Marx came along with thousands of other Jews to the land of opportunity. Just as well, because we all know what happened to the Jews who stayed behind in Germany. In the year 1848, Mark became Marcus and his life took a turn. Prior to migration, Marcus was a school teacher. Once he was in the States, he worked as a merchant peddler for a while. But that wasn't enough for him. He wanted to do something bigger, something that excited him. He had confidence in his entrepreneurial instincts and in 1869, he set up a small business in a one-room office on Pine Street, New York. Marcus bought promissory notes from local merchants and sold them to New York's commercial banks. Promissory notes are financial instruments that contain a written promise by one party to pay another party a sum of money either on demand or at a future day. Marcus's regular clients included wholesale jewelers, leather merchants, and tanners. The success of this idea made Marcus a man who had absolutely no background in finance, a pioneer in the commercial paper business. In 1882, Marcus decided that he wanted to expand, but he couldn't do it alone. Remember Joseph, Marcus's friend from the synagogue? Well, his sons were married to two of Marcus's daughters, one of which was Samuel, who married Marcus's youngest daughter and was invited to join the firm. Family ties run deep in the history of Goldman Sachs. In fact, many of the firm's partners intermarried families for almost the first 50 years of its inception. Samuel, who was born in July 1851 in Maryland to parents that had also immigrated from Bavaria and close friends to the Goldmans was an asset to the firm. At the age of 15, he worked as a bookkeeper. He started his career by running a business that dealt with boards, glass, and mirrors. With the addition of Samuel in 1882, the firm became Goldman and Sachs, and the already thriving business reached new heights under this very partnership. A credit report from 1882 described Samuel as being conservative and not speculative. He was meticulous and reliable. This combined with the diligence, accuracy, and persistence of Marcus helped them become one of the largest banks in New York. Samuel was committed to establishing the bank's reputation and expanding its business based on a proven formula of success. He continued to give special attention to commercial papers. He wanted to ensure that when the firm joined New York Stock Exchange, they would lead in sales of commercial papers. Back then, Samuel was also one of the few people to realize the hidden potential in companies raising funds by issuing stock. Along with his friend Philip Lehman of Lehman Brothers, he helped many large companies raise money this way. Marcus's son, Henry, and his other son-in-law came board a few years after Samuel and Goldman and Sachs became Goldman Sachs & Co., the name that we associate with it today.
Marcus was succeeded by Samuel and Henry, who became senior partners after his death in 1904. Samuel had the insight to see the tremendous benefit that the firm would have from expanding to the overseas markets. He personally traveled to different countries to establish connections that would help the firm. He strongly believed that they would be serving all Americans fairly only when they had a significant international presence. Samuel continued the great work until he retired in 1929. He died a few years later in 1935. Even though they weren't around physically, Marcus and Samuel created a foundation so strong that by the beginning of the 20th century, Goldman Sachs had become famous for being financially innovative. They picked up this art from their founder himself. In 1930, Sidney J. Weinberg was in charge. Here's an interesting fact. Sidney began his career with Goldman Sachs as a janitor's assistant. Hard to believe, considering they now hire right out of the top schools in the world. Sidney was so successful in his role that he is now known as the father of modern day Goldman Sachs. The beginning was hard as all beginnings are, especially because of the hard-hitting Great Depression. They managed to find their way through, but not without encountering some small hiccups here and there, sailing their way into the 21st century, and found trouble again. The collapse of the technology bubble, high-profile scandals, and the financial crisis of 2008 made it a difficult time for the company. But in just a couple of years, they were back on their feet stronger than ever before too. They launched new platforms all equipped to deal with the new world. In 2016, they launched Marcus by Goldman Sachs to help people manage their debt better. Though Goldman Sachs may seem like just another bank on Wall Street, what sets them apart is the strive for excellence. At no stage of their journey did they sacrifice the values that their founders tried so hard to build. They have remained committed to client service and teamwork and have managed to maintain the exceptionally high standards that they are known for. Goldman and Sachs are considered to be one of the most influential financial institutions in the world, always looking for new ways to do things. In this long 150-year journey, Goldman Sachs consistently delivered the very best for their customers. This goes to show that with good instincts and a little bit of luck, you can do great things. Goldman Sachs is one of the biggest banks in the world, and they're not going anywhere. If you enjoyed this video, consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. It does wonders for the YouTube algorithm, so more people can see our videos and so that you can be notified when we launch our next video. We try and put out at least one new one per week, and as you can imagine, the research and editing alone of these type of videos takes us close to 18 hours. So we would really appreciate it if you could also check out our Patreon. For just $1 a month, you can support our work. We produce over 12 videos per month, so that is literally 8 cents per video. Thank you so much and we'll see you at our next unmasking.